My name's Lewis Carter and I am the writer and one of the directors of Showdown. My name's Chris, uh, I'm the director, editor, cinematographer. <laughs> First and foremost, I wanted to find out what would happen if we made a Western film based in South Wales, what would happen if we took that classic Clint Eastwood uh, stoic cowboy hero and transposed him into a small village in South Wales. You're injured, man. Let us take you in the house. You got it going. And I was quite surprised when um, I started to think of this character as uh, a ten-year-old autistic boy. When I first uh, read the script, it immediately struck a chord with me because I've got two nephews who are both um, autistic and represent in very, very different ways. So I think that this project is extremely uh, important. I'm an autistic kid in the movie named Sam and likes Western movies, And but his father doesn't really like it. So it's like not a good relationship with his father, but in the end it all ends up great. Uh, set in a small village in South Wales called Bedlinog, where I spent a lot of time growing up. It's one of my favourite places in the world to go, and I jumped on the chance to put it on screen. After reading uh, Showdown, on the way to a job actually in Pembrokeshire, the first time Lewis was actually driving. Uh, I normally chauffeur him around everywhere, uh, so it was nice to kind of sit back and really, you know, enjoy this script uh, in a nice sunny day like this. And I uh, read it; I could see it; I could see it straight away. And that's when you know uh, you've got a good script. When Lewis told me the inspiration of this film. I was kind of a bit like cowboys and Indians in the, in the valleys, South Wales, you know, Wild Wild West, uh, I don't know. Nog just blew me away. Uh, I genuinely can't believe how picturesque it was. Fine Roland were very involved with uh, the making of a, a film about uh, an autistic uh, young boy uh, in Pembrokeshire who's a member of our charity partner, the VC Gallery, Dan Hood. What really inspired me about this was the fact that this leading role was autistic. Uh, we created a project a few years back with the VC Gallery, one of our secondary uh, charity partners, and it was about a young boy called Dan who could only kind of communicate when he put on a persona or an act. Uh, so we created a film for him and we, we made him into a little star in Pembrokeshire. There was always this thing in the back of my head where I thought, I really think we can do this with, with an autistic cast and with an autistic protagonist. Well, I had an email from one of our regular casting agents, Shelley Norton, and they said, whatever you do, you have to look at Charlie Locke. Hey, I'm Charlie Locke. I'm 10 years old. Well, I'm nearly 11. People think if you have autism, you can't succeed. But I want to show people that, that you can. So if I got this role, I would like to show all my Audi friends out there to keep trying because great things can happen to us too. It was, it was crazy luck that uh, Lewis, he, he shouted me from across the way. He said, you need to stop what you're doing. Look at this guy now, look at this guy, he's perfect. And uh, it, it was Charlie. And as soon as I saw that clip of him talking on the news, I shouted to Chris, we found our hero, we found our cowboy. Football. Well, I'm a good girl. Was it difficult to cast Showdown? Yes and no. It was it was easy in the places where we were told it would be hard. Our luck prevailed. Uh, my friend Lucy messaged me on Facebook and said, my son uh, is in college, he's autistic, and he would love to, to play this role. Erin was uh, one of the first actors to apply for the role of the bully in the film, which is a small but very difficult role to play especially if you experience bullying yourself, which Aaron did growing up. Today was like pretty, um, it, was, it was pretty new for me because I'd never like done anything like this before. So it sort of just gave me a pretty big insight as to like how people make, make short films really. I was a little bit nervous because I'd never played a bully before, but um, 
but I was willing to give it a go and see what I could do with the role, really. Um, obviously, people probably look up to it and think, um, I feel like they will look up to this film and I feel like they will get some inspiration from it. Erin used to get bullied back in the day in school, quite severely uh, from what I've been told. So it was when me and Lewis went to meet him, it was really inspiring and, and, and yeah, just really inspiring to see him want to play this role. Yeah, let's give him the opportunity to smash this role out of the park and he really did. I think it's a fantastic, honest, difficult performance and he did really well. End of the day thoughts. Yeah. What, what? Any end of the day thoughts? Yeah, what, what she said. There's always going to be obstacles in a, in a short film or in anything that you do. One day it was rained off, one day we couldn't get into one location so we had to totally scrap that location and go to another location. Um, but the main, the main challenge was the corner shop. Of course the pivotal set piece of the film, the showdown, takes place in the corner shop and because of the blocking of the scene which we had planned months in advance, we knew the layout of the shop had to be a very specific way and it again, it seems like no other corner shop in the whole of Wales is laid out in this way. Less animated. You scared the shit out of me. So solving the corner shop issue was uh, an example of our, one of our crew members stepping in to save the day. How well our prop guy and production designer stepped in and built a shop counter. <laughs> On our action. Boosh. There's a lot of loads of beer cans on there. Yeah, you've been drinking here again, have you? Yeah. God. You need no, to, what? You need to stop drinking. <laughs> no, stop. More like start. I think whoever took that, that role would have had certain challenges they needed to overcome. For Charlie, those were um, when we were shooting outside, dealing with some of the um, creepy crawlies and bugs that were uh, jumping about. I just said, oh, uh, cricket. You all right? <laughs> I don't think he liked that too much, <laughs> but um, I think he's forgiven us now, and he's, uh, you know, he soldiered on and he, he got the job done as he did in every scene. I mean, I, I'm enjoying all of these scenes. I don't really, I don't really mind how much gravel I get on my <laughs> shoes or stuff, but doing these scenes have been really fun. There were late nights involved, and again, even though I think he found it difficult, he soldiered on thanks to his support network of Karis and Jane, and um, he really did himself proud. He's a really expressive and you know just yeah blew my socks off actually watching yeah, it very natural yeah. um and not at all precocious no. just um lovely yeah, lovely little boy very talented baby mm. and what's this again sorry if you want to yeah, speak to the camera to, um, until everyone understands about autism so and that's the slogan yeah fantastic so choosing our, our charity partners for this project, there was the VC Gallery. The VC Gallery deals with everything, but we needed a charity that just dealt with autism. So obviously the National Autistic Society was perfect. Um, so we had to go and pay them a visit. Uh, secondly, we needed to do some research. They showed me this VR headset of a, a sensory overload. And it really shocked me, you know, we knew a bit about autism, but having this virtual reality and the sounds and the intense sounds in your, in your, in your ears, um, it really brought it to life. And I went back to, I went back to the office and I said, Lou, we have to, we have to incorporate that. We have to incorporate these sounds into the, uh, into the film. That's horrible, isn't it? No, it's the edge when the light put it on, it couldn't go to the edge yet, so, because it was too much ground coming. Yeah. <laughs> and our kids have got to go through that every day. No, exactly. That's what I mean. Is that kind of real as it, as it gets? Wow. That's, a, that's an outcome. Yeah. Everything's fine now. Yeah? Fine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all, isn't it? When I think of Berlinog, I think of my grandparents. Um, they spent the whole of their married life there, and I don't really know any other two people in the world that loved each other as much as they did really and unfortunately they're gone now but I always think back to how influential they were on me growing up. I think I really 
honestly started to learn how to tell stories from my grandfather when he would take me on walks over the mountains of Badlinog and tell me that the cowboys and Indians lived in the mountains and I had to keep my guard up and uh, we'd have these wooden walking sticks as makeshift rifles. I don't know if I would have been a storyteller if it wasn't for experiences such as that. Well, he loved kids as well so I think he would have really loved Charlie and what he's able to, uh, to achieve with this film. I think he would have been messing around with him between takes and everything if he was still with us. I enjoyed making this movie, yeah. to be honest. I loved being in all the scenes, I had loads of fun meeting new people and everyone in the crew. What do you feel about it? Yeah, and I want to echo that as well. It was um, a fantastic few days, um, a great team, a great production crew. And just a final thank you to, um, to Chris and Lewis, yeah. uh, who That's are exceptionally talented and very very welcoming yeah. a, bi a big thanks to them for actually choosing this to act in this movie yeah I, i've re it's really good that i'm really lucky that they chose me hopefully you're watching this behind the scenes documentary whatever you want to call it at the premiere and if you are it probably means that you were either a part of the crew of showdown or you know someone who worked on the film you know this was a very personal project as you can as you can see from this for me and Chris for various reasons and I just want to thank you all so much for for making this film a reality. Thanks to the cast and crew, thanks to Lewis to, for, for writing this script, I mean uh, again you've produced something amazing and thank you Charlie and Erin, um, out of everything I think you, you have both inspired us massively. You all really came together and you're the best crew I've ever worked with and I hope to work with you again someday but definitely not on a western. Yeah, so like um, we all like love acting. We all go to um, a drama school, and I think it's like what we all want to do when we grow up. Yeah, so it's a good experience, and it's nice to like be on set and to know how everything works and all the work that gets put into something, even as just like a little short film. It's, it's really interesting and a good experience. Critical? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's like have a makeup on. <laughs> no. Do you feel pretty now you've had your makeup done? No. <laughs> My nephew was autistic, so I know what autistic children go through. And he displayed character and put all his critics to shame. I think this is a great film, it's really lovely, it's really funny, and it's great to see an autistic character as the protagonist. Honestly, with this film, I think there need to be uh, more projects like this, just giving these kind of uh, giving these kinds of opportunities and just telling these kinds of stories. So I'm, I'm really happy, even in a very small way, to be uh, involved in something like this.